Hey everyone, today we're going to be going to a happy hour hosted by Creator Heavens, which is a DAO. Which We're parked now here, and there's this little dog that's screaming. <laughs> it's currently a happy hour. This tavern bar area. Very alcoholy place. Hey everyone, I'm here at Crater Cabin's happy hour with Zach, who's one of the co-founders of Crater Cabin. And they were covering what makes them really excited about Crater Cabins. I'm like, loves working there. And as you know, I lived in Crater Cabins in August and September. So the thing that makes me the most happy about Crater Cabins and why I really love this community and this DAO that we built is that we get to support really incredible creators like Liz, like Matt, like some of the other creators that have come to our residence. All we're really doing is giving really talented people the space to do their work. And so it's really amazing seeing what talented people like Liz do when they have that opportunity and have that space to just like really run with it. Cool. Yeah, and one thing that I've heard from a lot of people is like, what is a DAO? How do I get involved involved with a DAO? I have like graphic design skills or I have marketing skills or I can write, but like I don't have the necessary like portfolio or experience. How can I like contribute to a DAO and get paid? Zach, could you answer how it works for Creator Cabin? Yeah, all you have to do is like follow us on Twitter and join our Discord server and start participating and find the spot in the Discord server that makes sense for you, whether that's you know like a writer's channel where all our writers hang out. You can be a writer, you can be to somebody who really Really likes to read good writing right whatever your background is whatever your skill set is like we definitely need your help and your input there's a million ways to contribute and all you have to do to get started is join the discord server and start communicating with people start chatting with people and making connections and that's really all that there is to it yeah. yeah you have a lot of people who haven't contributed to like crypto or like DAOs before who just yeah. like started yeah, we have a lot of people who the first cryptocurrency that they get in their wallet is Cabin, our native token, right? They just like show up to the Discord server, they're interested and curious in what we're doing in DAOs and they get involved, like I said, just by participating in the Discord server. And if they complete a bounty for us, we'll pay them for it. We'll pay them for it in Cabin. So it's a, it's a lot of people's very first DAO and it's a lot of people's very first cryptocurrency that they earn. And it's like a bounty, kind of like freelance work or contract? Yeah, that's a really great way of thinking about it. It's kind of like a contract. Uh, there's a little less, you know, paperwork involved, or a little the stakes are a little lower than there are with normal freelancing. So if you've never freelanced before, that's definitely not a barrier by any means. But that's a really like good comparable way of thinking. About it. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm gonna put Creator Cabins in the description and also links to like my time there. Thanks so much, Zach, for being on camera for me. Absolutely. He's very smart and he's an engineer and a co-founder of Creator Cabins and not necessarily a camera person, so he does like a great job. <laughs> and those are some of the Creator Cabins people. Paying for parking in Austin. Where's my receipt? Oh, no receipt, I guess. We're getting sushi tonight. It's at an all-you-can-eat restaurant, which means we have to finish it. Another round. Mochi. So I was listening to Emma Chamberlain in the car, which is the audio that you were listening to earlier. The episode, which is called Competition is a Thief of Creativity, talks about her frustration with award shows where people's creative pursuits are ranked and stacked against other people's like very, very different creative pursuits. It's like apples to oranges situation. And she talks about like there are some fields like sports where there's like objectively a clear person and it's not an opinion. Like, who's the fastest mile time? Very obviously, there's only one person. There's one right answer. You're not inserting your opinion. But, like, who created the best music video? Or who explained crypto the best? Who has the best crypto channel? It is much more subjective to, like, whatever your tastes are. And I felt this extremely strongly. Because the thing is, like, once there's opinions on, like, whatever you're creating, it might... Here, it's, like, a YouTube video... There's always going to be people who attack you. Like, <laughs> there's always going to be people whose opinions are just as true 
as like their feelings for them so in opinions honestly can't be wrong don't quote me on that but like those are feelings and those are like valid and you can't tell someone that the way that they feel isn't real and i was telling one of my friends you know i wish <laughs> i wish i chose something to care about that was very black and white where there was an opinion on tiktok there's this lady called miss excel who makes like this ridiculous amount of money every single day and she just covers really sec excel tips and tricks like data analysis data science math like there's like one right answer you know, fixing my roof like that who's gonna argue with you about like the best way to fix your roof and you would think with crypto like one thing you can't argue about is price but people do find a way to argue about price saying that like this crypto token is so low or this crypto token is too high like even with like something as objective as price people put their opinion there and because there's like so many opinions honestly when i started trying to make more of my own original content on tiktok not just reading people's tweets and making like a sly like witty comment about them it was actually quite hard for me because a lot of what i knew was mostly opinion or like storylines that other people had crafted to support their narrative what I actually did enjoy learning about were the crypto technicals such as staking, such as like the consensus mechanisms used by different protocols, clearly being able to define what like a protocol versus a DAO is, clearly being able to talk about like the slashing that occur when like you do something wrong. Those things you can't argue about in crypto. You can once you start saying, oh, like this is the best way to like stake, this is where you should be staking. Unfortunately, stuff like that is still for a pretty niche audience and I still want to gear my content for the average person or people, not average person, but like the person, the people who are still new to crypto, which does include like, not necessarily like what kind of crypto should I buy, but I'll be covering here are the different types of most popular assets and the story behind them for you to make your own decision, figuring out your own risk tolerance. Should you trade? how to get involved in crypto communities. Like those are probably the topics that I'll talk about because like more people care about that. Like I think people actually do tend to care about like good stories and opinions and actual facts. Anyways, I thought Emma Chamberlain's podcast was going to be good because obviously she's like the most successful vlogger of all time, but I think she's in a very bad place and she sounds like very angry. <laughs> But if anyone has recommendations for good podcasts, I want to hear from people who are able to tell stories really well. This is really important to me that I'm able to tell crypto stories really well so that, you know, anyone can understand this. I'll see you guys in my next video.